see something like this. Yeah, is that the little animals? Uh, that is an animal. Yeah. Okay. Anybody want to take a guess at uh, what yeah. phylum it's in? Let me throw out some phyla for you. Is it a brachiopod? Is it a bryozoan? Is it a mollusk? Hint, hint, hint. Is it? It is a mollusk. It's actually a type of oyster. And it's called a rudistid. It's a family of oysters that is characteristic of one and only one period in Earth history. And that's the Cretaceous. The Cretaceous is subdivided by its rudistid oysters into early, middle, and late Cretaceous. This is a hippuridid oyster, or rudist oyster, and that's a late Cretaceous form. So what I've just done is given you a relative age date of late Cretaceous for this particular rock without even knowing where it came from or how many millions of years old or whatever it is just by virtue of what fossils are in it. And that's the way it went until the 1940s, when we were actually able to age date radiometrically igneous rocks, and then the sedimentary rocks between the igneous rocks and cross cut by the igneous rocks, and thereby get absolute dates for these. A, uh, a rudist as well. Okay. So it's a very thick shelled calcium carbonate calcitic organism. Um, here's another one, right here, edge on. Now this is something else. Handle like what we use for stickball, but notice it has chambers that are going like this. Okay, have you ever, any of you heard of a nautilus? Yes. Like a chambered nautilus? Sure. Well that's what that is, it's just not a coiled nautilus, it's called an orthocone nautilus. It's a straight rather than a coiled series of chambers. So that's about the size of a stickball bat. Let me show you one that's more the size of a baseball bat. See how there's this expanding straight, like a baseball, like the yeah. like the shank of a baseball? Right. It looks and like it's a got cur yeah, and oh. it's got curved curved little chambered segments yep. that's also a straight nautiloid an orthocone nautiloid and you see the central part that has been partially infilled with calcite well all all nautiloids have a buoyancy regulating device called a siphuncle where they exchange gases and fluids and change their buoyancy that's how they go up and down in the water column these are swimmers they're nectonic organisms they change their buoyancy with a, a basically like a BC, like a scuba diver would use. Huh. But it's an internal BC, huh. and it's called the soy funkel, and that's what's going on there. Wow. So that's a really big one. Yeah. And again, these are swimming. Their closest relative is the modern chambered nautilus. Oh. Look at the size of this one, everybody. So they obviously lived in the Cretaceous, but some of them got through the Cretaceous tertiary boundary extinction and begat the chambered nautilus that we see in places like Palau today. So again, the big shank of it is the outer shell, and then these internal chamber separations are the living spaces that they existed in as they grew out into bigger and bigger chambers. So earlier today, more Irwin asked me a question like, do you, do you see on the inside of any museums any of these really elaborate, interesting um, marbles or sedimentary rocks with fossils? Well, look right here. Is that visually interesting or is that just kind of a homogeneous background? With my eyes, it's a homogeneous background. It's a homogeneous background. There's really not a lot going on there. They chose this limestone for that reason, because they hang paintings on these walls, and they just want it to be kind of a stable, homogeneous background. And that's why your eyes don't really see anything. You just see this sort of background. Come over and look at this piece over here. 
but look at that. What do you think that is? It's not chambered, but it has a, a whirl spun up around an axis. What have you seen that is a mollusk like the chambered nautilus, but it has one single chamber spun around an axis? Uh, I've seen them in uh, Maryland. Okay. What do they call? It's a piece of a bryozoan. We saw bryozoans in that Mississippian age Indiana limestone at the Department of Interior. So lots of little bits and pieces that stand out. So this is not so homogeneous. In other words, this is a low energy, fine grained mud where it's even the fine finest grain. grains could come to rest that had life in it. It was not a anoxic bottom. It wasn't without oxygen. It was 